Okay, in this lecture we're going to continue our discussion with uh, basic Unix commands. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a few commands that have to do with the file system and uh, in order to do that we're going to understand what uh, the file system in a typical Unix environment looks like. So Unix treats everything as a file, uh, directories and devices. Devices would be hard disks, USB drives, DVD-ROMs, printers, other things. Uh, you can access them in the, in the directory structure, in the file structure, uh, just as if they were an ordinary file. Uh, so there are three types of files. Uh, ordinary file is what you're typically used to. This would be a file that would contain text uh, or you know, other information. It, it, it actually could be a binary file or a regular ASCII file. Um, there's a directory file, which if you're a Windows user, you're, you're probably... Uh, used to calling these things folders, uh, and that's okay to use that term, but uh, the correct term is a directory, and so this is a, a folder c containing the names of other files and, and other subdirectories, so there are other folders as well. And then, uh, like I mentioned before, device files, which could be a, a printer or something like that. Uh, <coughs> So Unix files, we talked a little bit about this before, organized in a uh, hierarchical structure, an inverted tree, where the base of the tree uh, is the root directory. And this uh, figure here is not uh, a standard uh, structure, but it is, uh, these, these directories these that you see inside the root will be common of most Unix systems. So uh, over here on the left, you'll see bin, this is where the typical uh, binary or executable files are stored, uh, the ones that come distributed with uh, the system that, that you're on. Uh, dev is, of course, your devices. Uh, so this would be representative of a hard disk, a printer. Uh, home, this is typically where users are stored. So here, uh, here is two users, Romeo and Juliet. And then each of these users can have individual files and folders. So this would be a, a directory called Progs, where pro, programs that uh, Romeo would have inside his uh, direct is his directory, uh, where he may inst install files or other things. Then of course this is just an ordinary file. Uh, and then Juliet has a, a, a dot profile. So anytime you see a, a file name uh, that that is preferenced with a preference with a dot. It's a hidden file, and, and so these hidden files actually won't, won't be seen uh, by the regular ls command. You have to put in special options like the dash capital A, um, and I'll show you an example of that in a second. Uh, then we have, typically we have a lib where this is where shared libraries are stored. Uh, temp is, is a directory that's cleaned up by the system occasionally, so this is a place uh, that uh, applications might use to open up temporary files. Sbin, uh, this is a, a common directory where, uh, say, uh, general users may not have access to certain executables that reside in Sbin, but the system administrator will. And Etsy is typically where uh, system configuration files are found. Uh, then I inside, uh, there's typically a user file that has a bin and an Sbin and a lib and a local. And uh, so Bin, user bin is typically where uh, a lot of other applications are stored that the user will typically use. Uh, user local is a, is a location that you can install your own uh, new, new applications, new binaries, such that after a system upgrade, uh, user local will actually be untouched, so uh, where it's not true for, for the other folders. Uh, and then var is a, is, a, is a variable part of the um, file system that typically uh, contains things like uh, mail servers and printer queues and kind of uh, other things of this kind of sort that change through, throughout the operating system. Uh, we talked a little bit about this before, but just to reiterate, uh, in, you know, we, we can have absolute paths where we define a path from root, um, but we can also have uh, relative path. So relative path uh, can be indicated by a single dot. That that means the current directory, and then two dots uh, would be the parent directory. And I've got an example there, but we'll just go ahead and go over to the terminal and show you show you an example. So uh, 
if I uh, go into say ME5013 okay you can see that there's one file in there okay so if I'd like to uh, go up a directory or, or rather if I'm going to list uh, the, the files in the current directory I can use a dot there and then if I'd like to uh, go up a directory I can CD dot dot okay and now I'm back in the directory I was before so I can also uh, uh, do this from an absolute path so the absolute path would be CD home FES 788 ME5013 and then you can see I'm here but I can also go back a directory so you can actually go back multiple directories using dot dot so if we go back into 5013 and then say I want to go up two directories to uh, home itself so then I would uh, if you remember uh, we're in home FES 788 ME50313 so two directories up <coughs> would be cd dot dot slash dot dot and now you can see that I'm back in home so that's just an example of the the relative uh, directory shortcuts <coughs> so some important commands that you'll need uh, these are kind of commands you can't live without in a Unix environment one of those is uh, to how to make directories so make directory is uh, the com command mkdir um, you can make uh, directories in the directory that you're in you can also uh, make multiple directories at once so uh, make make directory my directory one my directory two would create two directories uh, in the current directory that you're in you can also make directories inside of <coughs> existing directories so if I type make directory my directory one slash my directory two that'll create a directory my directory two inside my directory one and then <clears throat> of course you can remove directories with uh, rmdir but this only works for empty directories if there's any files or subdirectories this will not work uh, there is another way to do it uh, using the rm command which we'll cover in a second um, but you have to use this uh, very cautiously and we'll talk about that in one second but let's go and just show you how to create a few directories so I'm gonna move over to Emmy's um, I'm gonna move over to Emmy 5013 again you can see there's only one file in this uh, directory there's no other subdirectory so we're gonna make a few uh, have like my directory one my directory two and my directory 10 okay now that you see the three directories if you do an ls minus la uh, <coughs> you can see more information on them uh, so now I want to make a directory inside say my directory 10 um, there's two ways to do that I can I can move into uh, change directory into my directory 10 and then create one here say my directory 11 and then you see it's there however I could also if we remove that see it's gone now uh, and I'll go back up a directory we could also create my directory 11 from uh, my directory 10's parent directory so uh, if I say make directory my directory 10 slash my directory 11 then move into that directory you can see there it is so that's an example of how that works so copy and move uh, we can move we can move files and folders uh, or directories uh, in order to move a, a directory we have to use the dash R uh, dash R means recursively so it'll move every file and folder inside the directory as well or copy it rather so uh, I'll show you two examples here in, in one second um, you can also move so if we just move file 1 to file 2 uh, in that case it, it basically acts as a rename utility I'm just simply renaming file 1 to file 2 um, however we can also you know create uh, 
Uh, we can also move multiple files inside of other directories. So if I give you an example demonstration here, I'll go ahead and clear the terminal. Go back up a directory. So there I have that test file. Let's first just copy it. If I, if I say test file uh, text, and then I want to copy it to my new file dot text. There you see uh, it is. <clears throat> now, if I want to take both of those files and move them into, say, my directory one, then I would use move my new file text test file text my directory one. Now you see they're gone from this directory, and if we move into my directory one, then there they are. Now, since these files both have the same file extension, I can actually use a regular expression to move them at the same time uh, in a much quicker way. So what I can do is I can say uh, move star dot text. This will take any file with the file extension dot text and move it. Now, where do I want to move it to? In this case, I'll move it up one directory and I'll use the shortcut dot dot. So now you see they're gone and if we go up one directory, uh, there they are again. So the final command that's, uh, you know, we can't live without is, is remove. So remove is basically how you keep your file system clean you know, remove unwanted files, but it needs to be used very carefully because um, you can actually do very dangerous things. For instance, if you had the right permissions and you typed this into the command line, you could actually re remove most of the files in your, in your, on your hard disk. Um, of course, you don't have the right permissions to do this on, on Shamu, uh, so there's nothing to worry about there. But you could accidentally remove all the files in your home directory. And one way to protect yourself is to use the option dash I. This will give you an interactive prompt that uh, forces you to confirm every uh, deletion that you're trying to make. So just real quickly, I'll give you an example of how to use remove. So uh, there we, we have a, a file, my new file that we created, and we'd want to remove it. So I just type remove my new file dot txt and you can see it's gone. I can also remove, if you remember, uh, we'll, we'll look inside, there, uh, we'll list what's inside my directory 10 here and you can see that my directory 11 is, is in there. And so if you want to remove both of them at once, you would type remove recursively my directory 10. And now you see they're both gone. So that's an example of how to remove, use remove. And this concludes this lecture.